glasses. Hello. It's Wednesday. It's Wake Up Wednesday. And I um, totally lost track of time. Completely. Sorry about that. Happens. Got all in my head. Uh, and I'll tell you, I was thinking about you guys. I am cleaning my glasses. I can't read any of your comments or really see much <laughs> of anything anymore if I don't have clean glasses. It's just how it goes with me. Who's here? Let's see. Hey, Jamie. How are you, Brittany Lynn, Stephen, Christopher? Oh, I love it. You're here. You're all coming in. Hi, everybody. Okay, so I was just saying for the people who are just coming on now, hi, 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 hi. I gotta put my glasses back on. They are incredibly dirty. I just, I, yikes. Christina, hi, honey. How are you? Hi, everybody. Oh, yes. Swift Gabe got his neck at April today. Turtle Power Cosplay, Nicolette, Turtle Power Cos, yes! Oh, Jamie, I'm sorry you're not feeling so good. Christopher, hi! Oh, Brittany, you know, I would have to, she said, Brittany wants to know if I remember her from meeting her at a Comic-Con. I can't see your picture. I'm sure if I saw your picture, hey, Michael Clear Records, Clyde, hey, hey, hey! So, uh... Orange Crush, that's so great, Orange Crush. I love that. Who doesn't love an Orange Crush? Um, and Jade, duh. Hi, everybody. And George, I love it, you guys. You're all coming in. Okay, so I was a little late uh, getting here today because I was, you said, hey, buddy. Um, I was, uh, putting makeup on for you and fixing myself up because I feel like uh, when I show up for you guys, you know, I, I always want to show up as myself, but um, I'm telling you, it, it gives a girl a lift when she's got maybe a little bit of mascara on and a little bit of lipstick. It definitely helps. Um, but I was upstairs and I was thinking about you guys um, because I've just had so many thoughts running through my head. Um, those of you who follow me on Instagram know that I just finished a nine day cleanse. It was part of the medical medium liver rescue, uh, cleanse. And it was called the three, six, nine, and it was for nine days. Um, it's always challenging to do a cleanse because you are detoxifying your body. But let me, I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to be all transparent with you. So, uh, I am, I am looking 60 just right in the face. I, uh, I'm 58 years old. I will be 59 in June. And my 60th birthday is in a year and a half. And I have a plan for it. Now, I remember when I turned 40 and I was a little freaked out. And I thought, well, and I might have told you guys this story before. But what can I do to make turning 40 feel exciting and good? Because at that point almost 20 years ago, I uh, thought that that was old. It's so funny how the older you get, everything seems young. Um, like 80, not that old. Um, but when I turned 58 in June, and P.S., I got, it's all me here. There's no fillers, there's no Botox, there's no pulled anything. I got no problem with anybody who wants to do that. I just don't like putting chemicals in my body um, that don't originate in me uh, if, if, if I don't have to. And uh, so when I turned 40, I decided, or when I turned 39, I said, by the time I turn 40, 
I want to be in the best physical shape that I've ever been in. And, um, and I know that that's going to help me wrap my mind around turning 40. Well, now that I'm getting, you know, I'll be 59 this year. I'll be 60 in 2023. Is that right? Yeah. Um, uh, thank you for all the compliments, everybody. It does a girl good. Um, I'm actually good with getting older, which is why I'm being completely transparent with you guys. Um, and I know a lot of, uh, there's a lot of ageism in our society. And I think more and more people need to, you know, just be themselves and say who and what they are. Um, hi, Aaron. I, I love you, Aaron. Um, you guys, at some point you'll meet Aaron. Um, but, uh, uh, where was I? I'm sorry, I got I got distracted. Um, so I do like to be transparent with you guys uh, about where I am and who I am, hopefully to encourage you to maybe be that same way in your life. You don't have to be, but I think sometimes it, you know, somebody steps forward and just sort of owns who they are and, and what they're about. So anyway, I have a new goal and uh, what I would like to do is when I turn 60, so I have a year and a half to do this, I want to be in the very best shape. I'd like to say in my life, I should probably say in my life, the very best shape of my life. Now, I am not an athlete. I'm not going to be doing the Olympics. Um, I did run a marathon when I was 40, that was sort of my goal. I'm not doing that. I just want to be strong. I want to have uh, more uh, core strength, muscle definition, just overall, just uh, in my family, osteoporosis runs in the family. So I want to have a greater bone density. I want um, to have more endurance. I want to have flexibility. Okay, all of that. Why? Well, first of all, because I want to be healthy, um, I intend, if I am in my sound mind, to go into my 100s. I plan to be one of those people who experiments with old age down, like into my 100s. I, the number I have in my head is 120, but I'm willing to go to 150. They say the person has been born who's going to 200. In my lifetime, I've watched people uh, go, uh, you know, live a whole lot longer. We have great genes in my family, and uh, I just want to see what I can do with it. Um, but I got to have my brain intact, and I have to have my body intact. And truly, part of why I did the cleanse as well is, you know, everybody's getting sick right now. We are discovering that, you know, you can do everything that you do uh, to stay healthy, whatever way that you choose to do it. And it doesn't seem to matter because life is what it is. People are getting sick. And uh, what they are finding is that People with comorbidities um, who uh, uh, generally it's uh, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, those kinds of things um, are uh, succumbing or if they're not succumbing, they are having a rougher ride of uh, getting ill. And so it seems to me since everybody's doing what they need to do to feel safe and protected and it's not really helping to keep you from getting sick what you can do is minimize your experience of it and so that means inflammation is a huge part of it uh having a weight that is good for your body there's no one size fits all for anybody whatever is your definition of strong and healthy or healthier 
which minimizes your risks of getting sick. And it's not just for, for you know, COVID. It's for heart disease. It's for arthritis. It's for any kind of autoimmune. There's so many things. Anyway, so taking care of ourselves is paramount. Why? Because we're in a time of great transition. We're in a time where there's so much upheaval. There's so much craziness out of there. And what I think so many people are experiencing is a, a time of their identities are changing. I know my identity is changing. It has changed, is changing. And um, our life paths are changing. You know, it's a time of reinvention. It's a time, you know, the reason that we have this, you know, shortage of people in service positions and in a lot of jobs is because when everybody got this time out, there was a big reevaluation that so many people had in their lives about who, who they are, what they want to do. You know, there's, there is a gift in staring death in the face because it makes you get like, you, you bring your game to the table. It's sort of like dress rehearsal is over. It is time for me to live. And so that generally means for a lot of people is it's time to reinvent. Well, the challenge of reinventing is if you don't feel powerful in your life, if you don't feel like you have any authority, if you don't feel like you have any control, if you don't feel like you have a, you know, a, 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 an aim, you know, a place that you're aiming, you'll become overwhelmed and uh, shut down. And it's very easy to feel like you are not the controller of your destiny or your universe or your life. And oftentimes, in addition to that, people are waiting to either get permission to change, permission that it's okay to change, or waiting for somebody to show up and make the change for them. And it just doesn't work like that. One of the greatest things to learn in a person's life, I think, and it's the thing that I have learned and continuing to learn, and I know that there's gonna be a lot of layers to it, is that I am in charge of my life. I don't give it away to other people anymore. I don't, I am not waiting per, for permission from somebody else to live the life that I am meant to live. And sometimes I don't even know what that life is. I don't even know what it looks like anymore. You know, the other side of, uh, you know, revealing to everybody, you know, I know on IMDB, I think I'm 53 years old, something like that. Um, to really like come out and say, hey, I'm 58. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I am looking at 60 in my industry there is a tremendous amount of ageism and uh, older women particularly are not considered as valuable, which I think is absolute and utter bullshit. I am not in agreement with it. I am not uh, down with that. I'm not like, really? I've had so many, when I was 30, they told me my career was over. When I was 40, they told me that were my career was over. When I was 50, I mean, like, I just don't buy it. But what I do experience is that at this phase of my life, if I want to have more roles and opportunities, I'm going to have to create that myself. The other side of it is... I've been doing this for so long and I do love doing it. Oh, I love doing it so much. I love making pretend. I love 
being on set. I love making movies. I love making TV shows. I love all of it. You know, I'd love, I haven't done a play in forever. I'd love to do a play. And there is way more to me than just being an actress. Like, there are so many sides to me. I am a designer. I am an artist. Like, I have a, a definitely some dreams of other things that I'm gonna do that are related to what I do as an actress, but are completely different. Um, and I am going to be exploring those and giving myself permission to reinvent other parts of my life and to have a wider spectrum of who and what I am and what I could do and be because I think I'm like, I got like a whole nother life to live. If I'm going to 120, I'm at the middle mark. I'm not seeing it at the end mark. This is like the middle of my life. And what I have now is all of the experiences that brought me here. You know, I, I don't know if any of you have said this, but, um, you know, if I only knew, like, I wish that I knew now, then, what I know now when I was raising my kids, I would raise them completely differently. I, I absolutely would. Um, and I get the opportunity because my kids, I'm so close to them and I love them so much and they're such great humans that I'm really open with them and really candid with them and I'm very open about the mistakes that I've made and how I would do it better. And um, I like to think on, on most days we have good communication and they're also adults and learning how to live their lives. So sometimes you have to kind of push mom away a little bit, which is great. And I love that they will also come back and check in with me. But if I, even if I had started my career knowing what I know now, I would have had a whole different career. The number of times that I devalued myself and, and didn't believe in me, like right out of the gate. And I was so blessed with so much success. You know, I was talking to a really good friend today and she was talking about how she's played small her whole life and how she is done with that. Like, I think she's really done with that. But nobody is giving that to her. That is something that she is giving to herself. So one of the things that's really important when you're gonna take control over your life is that you're not allowed to be a victim ever again. Ever. Because that is another way of giving away your power. Doesn't mean things won't happen to you that you don't like. Like, we'll take the example of when my house was robbed. Yeah. Um, I was a victim of a crime, but Boy, did it empower the hell out of me. And boy, did it open up doors. It was a, a flipping the script on how I wanted to view that experience. And so one of the things of reinventing your life and, and, and having the life for as many days that you get to um, be alive is that you get to be the sovereign being of your life. And if that is a foreign idea to you, I would recommend to just consider, what if? What if that's true? What if she's not bullshitting me? What if I do have more power? What if I have been playing small? As somebody who has played small, and it may look like, you know, because I've, I'm an actress and I've done things and you, you know, that's how we're all together here. But I have played small. I have given my power away. 
until I got to the point where I, I wasn't going to do that anymore. And I do think that that has something to do with getting older and, and wiser. I'm also somebody who is incessantly curious. I own the title lifelong learner. I follow my curiosity and I think my strongest suit, and this is what I would recommend for everybody is Einstein said, creativity is more important than knowledge. And is that right? Somebody help me out with that one. It's it's in that vein. It just ran out of my head. Uh, imagination, excuse me, it's not creativity. Imagination is more important than knowledge. And it really is true. It's, your imagination is what will take you to your dreams and your goals and your true love and your joy and your purpose and your delight. It's imagination. And I would like to say that I believe our culture, I can only speak for the United States, but I think it's the Western culture in many ways, but I can only speak to where I live and grew up we have that drummed out of us. I think that the education system doesn't foster creativity. It fosters good factory workers. It fosters people who can stand in line, people who can follow the rules, who can answer a multiple choice question. I think that critical thinking is part of a creative uh, exploratory mind. And that the if you feel like you don't know how to be creative or my imagination it's a little rusty that's okay it's okay all you have to do is go back and, and be there and start exploring like i the the fastest way is to go into play mode to there's a book called the artist way by julia cameron and she, and i recommend it for people i've given that book away a million times I've never been able to keep a copy because I always give them away when, I, when I'm done. But one of the things that she recommends is an artist date. Once a week, you make a date with yourself, just you, nobody else, and you do something fun. It could be, I'm going to color in coloring books. It could be, I'm going to go to the mall by myself. It could be, I'm going to go take a walk in nature. It could be, I'm going to, uh, you know, give my gift myself the time to take a bath and read a book. I am going to, you know, do that thing that I keep putting off that's just for me. And it's a date that you have with yourself, hopefully that inspires your creativity in some way. So you start making friends with that part of you, that little kid part of you that loves exploration. You know, the way to have a really healthy brain is through novelty. The, the brain craves novel experiences. And the more that you can um, give yourself uh, uh, something fun, and it's this is not anything that you have to spend money on. This could be going, you know, I don't know. There's not a lot of bookstores out there, but going to a bookstore and looking at books. It could be, you like cars, you know, go to some place in town that's got like some old cars and go walk around and look at them. I know in Los Angeles, we had Bob's Big Boy. Every Friday night, they have vintage cars in the parking lot. My kids love that. And it was just tons and tons of cars or whatever it is that you love. You know, make something, make something beautiful and it starts that creative, it's like, oh, I remember this. It gets those juices flowing. And 
I love it. You guys are, there's so many great comments here. I just know it. And I love going back and reading um, uh, what you guys have to say. Sometimes I can't find exactly where the live ones are. And I, I found them one time and then I lost them. And so I got to figure out another way to get there. But anyway, um, so I think that reinvention, it is such a time of reinvention, but it's really hard to reinvent if you don't feel like you have opportunities. And the thing is that that is where you have to bring your game. That is where it is so important to start exploring the possibility that you might have opportunities around you that you can't see. I love, uh, I think it was John Asaroff told this story about this guy walking through the desert and he was so hot and exhausted and thirsty and he thought I'm gonna die I can't find water every anywhere and he you know was just like I, I'm not gonna make it I'm not gonna make it I'm not gonna make it and when they pull back and show the picture of this person hoofing through the desert all around him was cactus all he had to do was reach down be willing enough to take that prickly cactus in his hands, crack it in two, and there was so much nectar inside of him, inside of that cactus, all around him. There's all this cactus, and we miss the opportunities that surround us. And you know, it is a it is a skill that you can hone, absolutely. It just takes the willingness and the desire. And so if you're in a time in your life when you're thinking like, I wanna reinvent, or I'm not happy with where I am, or who am I, or what do I want? That is when your imagination is your biggest asset. It's really what gets you on the path. And then if you can start building a habit and a belief, because it's something that you have to build, because we are not trained to believe in ourselves, we are not trained to think well of ourselves, and we're not trained to believe that we can have great things. Except how did anyone ever have great things? They believed that they could have it. They, uh, if nothing else, they open themselves up to the possibility that they could have it. And so I think right now that it's a wonderful time to take some time for yourself and figure out what is it that you want. And if you don't know what you want, you are in good company. Because so many people of all ages, from little bitties to 80, 90 years old, beyond, are still trying to figure out who they want to be when they grow up. And I, I believe that you have the say in how it goes if you believe you have a say in how it goes. And if that's a new concept, yay, you've got a new cool thing to work on. And if that's something that you've been working on, and I've been seeing some of these comments as they've gone by, people are working on themselves. And um, it is a lifelong process. You are never, it's never too late. You're absolutely right, chromatic man, it is never too late. You're never too old. You're never too thin. You're never too fat, you're never too tall, you're never too short, you're never too dumb, you're never too smart, you're never too poor. I don't think anybody ever says they're too rich, so we're not even gonna include that. But we are the creators of our lives and it is time to take the reins on that and start exploring what that looks like and what that feels like. And the other side of it, and I'm gonna go soon because it's at 30 minutes, that's a long time to ask anybody to sit here and listen to me jabber on. Um, but I love talking to you guys so much. 
Uh, oh, heck. Where, where was I going with that? I don't remember. Uh, it doesn't matter. We have this wonderful opportunity to reinvent ourselves. I am taking this opportunity. It's scary. It's incredibly uncertain. I am making friends with uncertainty. I am making friends with not knowing. And what I'm learning is that the safest place to be is the present moment. The past is gone. The future is not here. But I have this moment and my breath and my open heart and this is the safest place and the best place and I do believe it is the portal to infinite possibility here now right now right here and we all have it there is we are made of the same stardust it's just what are the stories that we tell ourselves what is our life experience and what can we give to ourselves so that we can be wonderful custodians of the planet, good citizens of the planet, and kind-hearted, loving people to make this world, whatever it is trying to become, a bigger, better, more wonderful place. So I love you guys. I'm so glad that you all came to hang out with me today. And, um, and we're gonna do this soon. And let me know what are some of the things that resonate with you or that you would like to talk about or things that you are working on. Let me know and um, and also tell me where you're from. I just, that is my favorite thing because I love that um, we're all here together from around the world. This is the best part of the interwebs. All right, you guys, 32 minutes. I'm sending you all my love, Mwah! and I will see you next time. Oh, Detroit, okay, Mwah! all right, bye guys.